There's got to be a light switch in here somewhere. Ah. Uh. Well, Marquis, I hope that you can find some things in here for your career day project. Thanks, Mom. Does this work? Mm, how about that? Oh my, who is this in the picture? Hmm, let's see. Actually, that's your father's Uncle Bob. The last time he visited was before you were born. He left some of his stuff here in this trunk. He was a geologist, but he imagined himself to be an adventurer. Was? Is he still alive? You know, I, I think so. But it's been a long time since we've last seen him. I'll get that. Okay, Mom. Oh, Mom, what's geologist? I'll be right back. Not if it's Aunt Bernice. Wow, that mountain's pretty high. Hello, up there. <laughs> Hello. Hello, up there. Must have been imagining that. Hello! Uh-oh. Oh my gosh! Uncle Bob? Well, that depends. Who are you? I'm Marquis. I live here. What are you doing here? I don't know. I mean, I heard someone calling and thought they might be in trouble. Are you in trouble? Well, yes, I do have a problem. How can I help you? I've got to present a report to my class about careers. I want it to be real exciting. Mom tells me you're a geologist. Well, yeah, amongst other things. What's a geologist? Well, simply put, a geologist is someone who studies the earth and the materials that make up the earth, including the study of rocks and minerals. By the way, that is what I was doing when you called. We are still on the Earth, aren't we? Well, of course. But what's to know about the Earth? I mean, it's basically a big ball, right? Ah, oh, I could see this is going to take a while. Yeah. Yes, the Earth is pretty much a sphere. But if you could slice into the Earth, you would see several layers. The outer layer, the part we see and stand on, is called the crust. The crust is made mostly of rock and it covers the entire planet from the highest mountains to the earth that is beneath the deepest oceans. Just below the crust is the mantle. It extends down about 1800 miles to the core. The temperature here is hot enough to melt rock. But only some of the mantle is partially melted. It actually flows very slowly below the crust. The rest of the mantle is under such great pressure, it is solid rock. At the center of the earth is the core. Scientists think the whole core is made of nickel and iron. However, the core is divided into two parts. The outer core is below the mantle. The temperature here is hotter than the mantle. All of the outer core is completely melted. The inner core is even hotter. Temperatures here may be over 6,000 degrees centigrade. It's so hot that it should be completely melted, but it isn't. You see, the weight of all the layers of Earth around it have pressed it into a solid mass. Does that help? I've really got to get back to climbing mountains and collecting rocks. Hold on a second. What does all this have to do with rocks? Well, if you didn't have rocks, you wouldn't have Earth to walk on. I guess we better start at the beginning. Rocks can be found just about everywhere. The Earth's entire crust is made of rock. All mountains are made of rocks. 
On some mountains you'll see huge rocks sticking out. These are called outcroppings. Outcroppings are still part of the crust. Actually, if you're standing on soil, sand or pebbles, you are standing on rocks that have been changed into tiny little rocks either by nature or by man. But there's still rocks. Everywhere you look you see rocks. They're all different shapes, sizes, and even colors. Rocks are the non-living solid materials that make up our earth. This means that no matter how much something may look like a rock, if it's alive, it can't be a rock. If it's a liquid or not solid, it can't be a rock. And even though it's as hard as a rock, like this plastic toy, or even if it looks like a rock, like this rubber ball, if it was made by a person, it can't be a rock. Watch. If you look closely at this rock, you'll see different colored particles. These different particles are minerals. Minerals are the non-living, solid materials that make up rocks. All rocks are made of minerals. This rock is granite, but the particles you're seeing are the minerals, mica, feldspar, and quartz. Other rocks may be made mainly of one mineral. Limestone, for example, is mostly made of the mineral calcite. And the only mineral in this is quartz. What do you notice about this mineral? It has several flat sides. Very good. Like all minerals, it's a crystal. If you look closely, you can see six sides. This crystal is the shape of a hexagon. Hex means six. Now look at the mineral halite through a magnifying glass. It's commonly known as salt. Each piece looks like a tiny crystal in the shape of a cube. Crystals are made of particles, atoms, that are arranged in patterns that repeat over and over again in all directions. Salt has a cubic crystal shape. Different patterns cause different crystal shapes. Lots of rocks contain quartz and calcite. They're very common. There are more than 4,000 different minerals and more are being identified all the time. But only 12 minerals are commonly found in the 600 or so different types of rocks. 4,000 minerals? Uncle Bob, how can you tell them apart? It's not always easy. But every mineral is in some way different from every other mineral. You mean like some are smooth and some are rough? Very good, Marquis. These differences are called properties. Properties help people identify minerals. Can you observe any of the different properties in these two minerals? Well, they're different colors. Color is a property, but be careful. The same mineral may come in several colors, and different minerals can be the same color, like varicite and malachite. Geologists rub minerals on a streak plate to observe the mineral's true color. The powdery trail left on the plate is called a streak. Even though varicite and malachite are both green in color, varicite has a white streak. And malachite has a green streak. Another property geologists observe in minerals is their shininess, their luster. Minerals like galena, they have a metallic shine or luster. They have lots of metal in them, so they shine like metal. Talc, on the other hand, has a non-metallic luster. Talc is very dull and even has an oily look. Hmm. Other minerals with a non-metallic luster may appear shiny or glassy like this quartz crystal. Or even look silky like this mica. This mica seems to break apart in flat sheets. Very observant. This is a property called cleavage. Many minerals have a tendency to split into pieces that have flat surfaces. Minerals can be described by the number of directions they split into. Mica has only one cleavage direction and breaks into sheets. This halite mineral splits in three directions. It breaks into cubes. This mineral seems to be sort of soft 
and greasy, like soap. Excellent. That's an important property. But not all properties are observed so easily. For example, to determine hardness, a geologist would find out how hard it is to scratch a mineral. Try scratching a piece of gypsum with a paper clip. The paper clip leaves a scratch. Now try scratching a piece of quartz with that same paper clip. Hey, there's no mark. So what have you learned? The quartz must be harder than the gypsum. Very good. Geologists use Mohs hardness scale to compare a mineral's hardness. A softer mineral, like this gypsum, can be scratched by a harder mineral like the quartz. The gypsum is a 2 on the Mohs scale and the quartz is a 7. So the higher the number, the harder the mineral? That's right. The hardest mineral on the Mohs scale is a diamond with a hardness of 10. The softest is talc with a hardness of 1. Since talc is very soft, it can be ground up into a fine powder called talcum powder that is used on the skin. You see, a mineral's properties also determine its usage. Graphite is dark gray and so soft, it leaves a streak on a piece of paper. That makes it perfect for use in a pencil. Calcite is very hard. It could be ground up and then formed into cement. It's used to make sidewalks and buildings. Quartz is harder still, and its crystals are usually clear. It could be used to make glass. Diamonds are so hard that they can be used to cut, grind, or drill just about anything. This drill can cut through concrete. The tip of this drill bit is made from diamond pieces. Diamonds are also used for jewelry, so they're known as gemstones. Of all the minerals, there are only about 100 that are so rare and beautiful that they are called gemstones. Uncle Bob, are there any diamonds in your rock kit? My rock kit? You found my rock kit? Sure, it's right inside the trunk. Oh. Come on, I'll introduce you to the guys. You're going to introduce me to some rocks? All right, fellas. Ready to meet a new friend? Wow! Because my name on the wrist, you see, I can break and flake in two thin sheets. That was great, but I didn't see any diamonds in there. You're right, there weren't any. But this stone in my ring is a gemstone. It's called a ruby. Wow, it's beautiful. Where do gemstones come from? Rubies, like all rocks and minerals, come from the earth. Some rocks are formed inside the earth, in the crust or mantle. Some are formed at or near the earth's surface. What do you mean formed? I thought rocks were just sort of always here. Actually, Marquis, it usually takes nature thousands or even millions of years to make a rock. Rocks are formed in three different ways, and they are classified by the way they were formed. Deep inside the earth, the temperatures are so hot that the minerals actually become melted, or molten rock. This melted rock is called magma. The type of rock that is formed when the magma cools and hardens is called igneous rock. Igneous means fire. Magma that reaches the Earth's surface from a volcano is called lava. When lava cools and hardens, it becomes extrusive igneous rock. X means out. Extrusive rocks cool on the outside of the Earth's surface. They cool rapidly, allowing only small mineral crystals to form. Let me show you more. Basalt is an example of an extrusive igneous rock. It has small crystals and a fine texture. Magma that becomes trapped 
then cools and hardens before it reaches the surface is called intrusive igneous rock. In, as in, inside the earth? Right, Marquis. It cools very slowly, allowing large crystals to form. Granite is an intrusive igneous rock. Notice that the crystals are large enough to see the different minerals. The second type of rock is a sedimentary rock. You may have noticed little bits of rock being washed into streams and rivers when it rains. These little bits, called sediment, are washed into lakes or the ocean and sink to the bottom. Layer upon layer of sediment pile on top of each other. The lower layers are under great pressure from the top layers and are eventually pressed together to create solid rocks. Rocks created this way are called sedimentary rocks. Sedimentary means made by settling down. The actual type of rock form depends on the type of sediment. Some sedimentary rocks are formed from bits of other rocks. Some are formed from bits that were once part of living things. Shale is actually composed of mud and clay that has collected underwater. Sandstone is a very soft sedimentary rock that breaks easily. When you break a piece off, you can feel the grains of sand that make up sandstone. It's also very rough. You can see the layers that were pressed together over the years. As sedimentary rock is forming, tiny plant and animal remains may be trapped between the layers. When the remains decay, they leave impressions in the rocks called fossils. Can you see the shark's tooth? Another way sedimentary rocks are formed is from minerals that dissolve in water. Over time, after the water evaporates, just the mineral crystals are left behind as sediment. Limestone is formed this way. Halite, the mineral we know as salt, is formed this way too. Halite is mined in areas that were once covered with salt water. The third type of rock is metamorphic rock. Metamorphic means to change. Rocks deep in the earth may actually become other kinds of rock due to tremendous heat and intense pressure. Hot magma rising through the Earth's crust comes in contact with other rocks and causes them to heat up. This can change the structure and texture of the rock and change it into a different kind of rock. Most metamorphic rocks form from the movement of the Earth's plates. Plates that collide can cause rocks to crush together, creating tremendous pressure. This pressure can make the rock become more compact and change into a different kind of rock. So you see, Marquis, any kind of rocks can be changed into metamorphic rocks. Limestone, when squeezed and heated, can become marble. Sandstone can become quartzite. Shale, under great pressure, can become slate. And granite can become nice. So all the rocks in your rock kit are either igneous, sedimentary, or metamorphic? Absolutely. Take it away, guys. I'm igneous. Melted rock me. I'm a tree for my layers you see. I'm metamorphic. I was once igneous or sedimentary. But great pressure and heat finally changed me. Marky, see if you could tell me what the difference is between this rock and that one. That's not a rock, that's a mountain. You're right. It is a mountain. But it's a mountain made of granite, which is a rock. And this is a granite rock. So I guess the difference is the size. Exactly right. Even though this rock is much smaller, it has the exact same ingredients. It's possible that at one time this rock was part of a much larger rock like that mountain. So nature can change the size of rocks? That's right. Over the centuries, rocks are exposed to wind, rain, snow, ice, and other forces of nature. When water seeps into a crack in a rock and freezes, the ice expands, increasing the size of the crack. This process, repeated year after year, eventually breaks rocks into smaller pieces. Plants can also break a rock. A root may extend down into a crack. 
As the root grows, it can break the rock apart. This process of big rocks being broken into little rocks by nature and weather is called weathering. Chemicals can also weather rocks. When water and CO2 from the air mix, they form a weak acid. This acid dissolves limestone and sometimes forms caves in the rocks. While weathering breaks down the rocks, it is erosion that moves them. We've talked about how rivers and streams can move sediment into lakes or the ocean. There are other ways that rocks are moved. Waves at the ocean are so powerful, they are constantly eroding rocky cliffs. Winds can move tons of dirt during a dust or sandstorm. And glaciers are even more powerful. A valley glacier is like a river of ice found only in the highest snowy mountains. A valley glacier can be a thousand feet thick. And even though glaciers move very slowly, they have the power to break off and drag a boulder the size of a house. The final stage of movement is called deposition. When wind and water finally come, the rocks and the sediment settle to the bottom. They are deposited in different areas. We saw deposition in the formation of sedimentary rock. Would you believe that I could change a sedimentary rock into an igneous rock? Not really. You're right. I can't. But nature can. For over a period of thousands or even millions of years, forces of nature can change one kind of rock into another kind of rock. This process is called the rock cycle. A cycle is something that happens over and over again. It doesn't have a real beginning or ending. As we already know, igneous rock is formed when hot magma that comes from inside the earth cools and hardens into rock. Eventually, weathering will break the igneous rock into those tiny little pieces called sediment. And sediment... Wait! I know! Erosion carries the sediment into lakes and oceans where it sinks to the bottom. Layers of sediment press upon other layers of sediment until finally a sedimentary rock like sandstone is created. Very good, Marquis. When sedimentary rocks become exposed on the surface of the earth, weathering and erosion can start the cycle over again and new sedimentary rocks are formed from old. Or, instead of becoming exposed, the sedimentary rock can become buried in the earth where heat and pressure can change it into a metamorphic rock like quartzite. Or, the sedimentary rock could become completely melted. So, when it moves up towards the surface and cools, it would become igneous rock, right? I think you've got it. Care to give another example? Well, that igneous rock could be pushed back down into the earth. Then, with enough pressure and heat, it could be changed into a metamorphic rock. And, I suppose if it got hot enough, the old igneous rock could actually be melted and changed into a new igneous rock. Hey, this is fun. Now, if that metamorphic rock comes to the surface... Through weather and erosion, it could eventually become sedimentary rock. But what would happen if that metamorphic rock stayed under the surface? Well, if there was enough pressure and if it got hot enough, it could be changed into another kind of metamorphic rock. Or, if it got really hot and melted into magma, and then erupted like a volcano, it would become igneous rock when it cools and hardens. So what has the rock cycle taught you, Marquis? Rocks are continually changing, and igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic rocks can all become each other. But that usually takes thousands, or even millions of years. So, Marquis, are you ready for a trip to the center of the Earth? I think I'll pass, Uncle Bob. It's more than 6,000 degrees down there. But I might start collecting rocks. Just rocks? Not minerals? Well, you can't really collect rocks without collecting minerals, since minerals are the material rocks are made out of. It would be interesting to look at some of their properties. Their color, luster, cleavage, and hardness, and categorize them into three groups. Igneous, rocks that were first molten magma deep inside the earth. Sedimentary, rocks that were formed from layers of sediment being squeezed together over the years. 
and metamorphic, sedimentary or igneous rocks that were changed by heat and pressure. Of course that could all be changed. I know, I know. Through the rock cycle, each of the three types of rocks can become any of the other types of rocks, but that usually takes thousands or even millions of years. That's a long time. Speaking of time, when are you going to have enough information to write that report of yours? You know, Uncle Bob, I think I've got plenty. Marquis, you found plenty of what? Oh, Uncle Bob was just... Uncle Bob? Oh, I see. You found your Uncle Bob's rock kit. Uh, yeah. That's a metamorphic rock. It forms when pressure from the Earth's plates crush it. And this is a sedimentary rock. And this is granite. 